guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today I have a very, very exciting video that I wanna share with you. Canon's RF 100 to 500 millimeter lens just came in the mail. I am so excited. Getting your hands on one of these lenses has been very, very tricky. If you try to order within Canada like I've been trying to do, it's been unsuccessful just because Canon is on back order with this lens. So if the shop that you're ordering from doesn't already have this lens in stock, then you're gonna be put on a wait list, which is what happened to me. However, I ended up canceling my order with my original purchase with Vistec.ca, and I went with my option of buying through the States. That's right, I ordered this lens from Amazon.com. I got the package within three days. This means I can start taking a lot of wildlife photography and video and really just getting to do what I love at a lot of higher quality. So thank you guys for stopping by. I'm going to unbox this lens right now and then take it out in the field and do a little review for you. Let's go. Trusty Gerber knife. All right, let's do this. It's kind of weird to like sit down and unbox something as opposed to like standing up. Cause I don't know. You guys sit down and unbox, I usually stand up, but just for the sake of this video, I'm sitting down. I also stand up to eat, or I used to stand up to eat at least. It made people uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, I feel like I was kind of hovering around them, but packaging is really nice. So it's got all this bubble wrap right on the top. And there is the box. Oh my gosh. I am so excited right now. There's the box for the Canon RF. 100 to 500 millimeter F 4.5 to 7.1. I'm guessing this is like the instructions. If you can see there, it's pretty wrinkled. Yeah, it kind of breaks down the build of the lens and, and what each part of it does, which is kind of neat. So, ooh, very nice. Look at this beautiful Canon case. Let's open this up. Oh, lovely. Comes with a little strap for the case. And here is the lens. All wrapped in this bubble wrap. Ooh. And guys, there it is. The Canon RF 100 to 500. First impressions right off the bat, obviously I haven't had this lens on my camera body yet, but I will say that the build quality feels really, really nice. Now I know that they used um, an engineering plastic for most of the design in order to keep the build quite light. I am really kind of impressed just with the way that the lens feels and how light it is. It looks very, very sleek, clean. Everything feels very, very smooth. This is the lens kind of fully extended out. So yeah, if you want to fully extend this lens, it's kind of like a one, two, and then three, or just one long zoom. It has this smooth and tighten ring right here where you can actually tighten at a certain focal range. So say I want to stop at 300 millimeters, I can tighten there at 300 millimeters or I can loosen it up and make extending and retracting a lot easier. It's got the focus ring here towards the back and then it's got this custom ring that you can set a particular custom setting to if you wish. On the opposite side of the lens, you have all of the buttons. At the very bottom, you have the different stabilizer modes. So you have one, two, and three. You have image stabilization on or off. I'm gonna keep that on most of the time. Autofocus or manual focus switch. And then you have your distance switch, which ranges between full and then three meters. So if something is kind of closer to you within three meters, you're gonna to wanna to put that on three meters. And if it's further away, you put it on full. That basically communicates to the lens that the subject that you're trying to photograph is closer oh. than it is further away. What? So guys, that's just kind of a quick overview of how the lens feels in my hands after just you know a minute of holding it here, uh, some of the features that the lens has. But what I really wanna do here is get this lens on the camera body itself and get out there and take some awesome photos and video and really put this lens to the test. Another thing is I got a lead on a snowy owl that's downtown in my city right now. So that's super, super cool. And I got the lens today, so it kind of feels like I have to go check it out. Let's put this lens to the test. Let's see what it's capable of. Ah, oh, I'm so excited. Let's go.
So it's actually been almost a week since I've done that unboxing bit and I've got to test out this lens for a little while now and just get a little taste of what this lens is actually capable of. But I have tested out video, I have tested out photos and I do have some thoughts that I wanna share with you. Before we jump into the photo and video review for this lens, I do wanna talk about just the lens uh, itself and the build of the lens and how it feels ergonomically. For a 100 to 500 millimeter lens, it's actually quite small. It's, it's comparable to the EF 100 to 400, only slightly taller than that lens. The lens has some interesting features. It actually has three different stabilizing modes. The first mode is kind of just this general stabilization mode that you would probably use for most regular use or general use with the lens. The second stabilization mode is actually designed to keep the lens stable while you're panning. So it's good for panning a subject or a scene or anything like that. And so that is the second stabilization mode. And then we have the third stabilization mode, which is actually for tracking irregular movements. So if you're filming something like sports or maybe an animal that's moving really erratically, then the third stabilization mode might be your best bet. So on the note of stabilization, one thing that I'll say right away about the Canon 100 to 500 millimeter is that you definitely want to turn off stabilization on the camera lens if you have it on a tripod and you're trying to film something. The moon was out the other night and I was getting some really, really amazing photos with this lens, which I'll pop up on the screen here in a moment. But I was trying to take some video and the lens just kept shaking and kept shaking even though it was on a tripod. And I wasn't quite sure why. And then it clicked that it was the image stabilization in the body of the camera and the lens that created this kind of shaking effect. And I don't know if any of you have experienced this before using a telephoto lens on a tripod, uh, but it's, it was my first time uh, experiencing this. And so what I ended up doing was I just turned off the stabilization and it gave me a nice stable uh, shot that I wanted because it was on a tripod. If you're doing handheld work, then going with the stabilization on is your best bet. However, when you're using a tripod and you want a completely still image, turn off your stabilization mode on the lens and you should be able to get that still image. Another thing that I can say about this lens right off the bat is that it's extremely pricey. Uh, this lens is over $4,000 in Canada right now and trying to order it is likely going to be painful as it's going to be on back order in a lot of places that you try. And that kind of leads me to expectations. So what are the expectations that you can have about this lens going into purchasing it? When I bought this lens, it was originally for wildlife usage and for some landscape usage and it hasn't really let me down. The only thing that I will say about this lens is that you need to set up back button autofocusing on your camera if you're going to be doing wildlife stuff. Now that's a completely different video that I won't go into here but I will say if you do want to take advantage of this lens's autofocusing capabilities then you're going to want to set up that back button focusing on your camera in order to give you that peak performance that you're looking for. It can be tricky to focus with this lens because it does have such a wide focal range. Uh, if you zoom all the way in and you're trying to find your subject that way, it can be tricky and the lens might pick up you know, sticks or twigs that are in front of it instead of the subject itself, which is why I recommend that you set up the back button autofocusing on your camera because that will really, really help you kind of gain control over what you're focusing on. And in terms of video, I was actually blown away at how still some of the footage looked with this lens. Zoomed in all the way at 500 millimeters, I was able to get some extremely handheld still footage that I was really, really happy with. In terms of the image quality, everything is tack sharp. It looks beautiful, which is exactly what you want if you're paying this amount of money for a lens. And so I have no complaints on that side of things. Really, I think if you're getting this lens and it's your first time having a telephoto lens on a mirrorless camera body, then you might experience some learning curves alongside that but don't get discouraged and don't assume right away that it's the lens's fault. The autofocusing hurdle, for example, you really wanna make sure that you've kind of laid out your camera in such a way that's gonna help you autofocus on your subjects, not just assume that the lens isn't capable of doing it because it totally is. You just need to figure out the best way to make it happen. In addition to that, the photos with this lens are insane. Uh, I'm extremely happy with the photos that I've gotten with this lens. I'll throw a few photos up here now, uh, but it is, but it's a monster. I'm extremely happy with how this lens performs photo wise. You're able to pull out amazing details in your subjects that are just so far away. But on that same note, guys, if the subject is just too far away, then the subject is just too far away. And that's okay. The lens is 100 to 500. It's not any further than that. And that has its limits to it. If the subject is reasonably close to you though, 
and you zoom in, you, you are gonna retain a ton of detail. You know, trying to shoot a little speck in the sky that's hundreds and hundreds of feet away. Obviously, you're not gonna get a shot that's really, really sharp and has a lot of detail in it. Uh, some subjects simply are just too far away. So all this considered, is the Canon RF 100 to 500 millimeter 4.5 to 7.1 worth it? I'm hesitating to say yes. Over $4,000 is a lot of money. So much so that you could actually put a lot of that money into something else that you're doing or pursuing. It has to be really, really important to you that you need tack sharp images of wildlife or sports photography, or you really, really want different perspectives on landscapes. I mean, this lens is capable of doing some really amazing work. And I'm excited to be able to create that and, and share it with you. Like I said, over $4,000 Canadian for this lens is a lot of money. And not everybody is going to agree that a lens is even worth that much to begin with. For me, I bought the lens because I want incredible wildlife photos and incredible wildlife footage while staying at a fair distance. I wanna be able to observe animals in their natural habitat without disturbing them. And so I went for this telephoto lens with Canon. I wanted to get a native RF lens for my Canon R5 because I knew how well that they would pair. When looking up reviews and comparisons with other lenses, this lens always did come out on top, especially in the video department. You can handhold footage at 500 millimeters in and it can be smooth and for me that was worth the money that's the reason why i got the canon rf 100 to 500 millimeter is because i knew that if i wanted to take video and there would be tons of time when i do that i wanted it to be stable i wanted it to be still and i wanted it to be usable footage now i knew the canon rf 100 to 500 was going to give me that so for me, it was worth the money, it was worth the investment. I know that this lens is gonna provide a ton of fantastic content for me to use and provide a perspective that not everybody is able to share. And so for me, this lens was worth it. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a few things about the Canon RF 100 to 500 millimeter lens. And I'm curious to know, what do you guys think? Is this lens worth the money? Please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for stopping by, Wiliwin. And just to clarify, Wiliwin means thank you in Wolistigwayak language. And so I just wanted to say, Wiliwin for my language. Thank you for being here, guys. This has been the review on the Canon RF 100 to 500 millimeter lens. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.